Hearing loss can be classified according to where it occurs. So it could be a conductive hearing loss, a sensory neural hearing loss, or a mixed hearing loss. Conductive hearing losses occur in the outer or middle ear. They are an issue with conducting sound to the sensory neural portion. The sensory neural loss could be in the cochlea or the auditory nerve. And mixed hearing loss would have a combination of both. You can also talk about hearing loss in terms of its severity, be it mild, moderate, severe. The time of onset, whether it occurred before language, prelingual, perilingual, during language, or postlingual after language acquisition, and the cause of it. Normal hearing sensitivity for children needs to be better than 15 dBHL at all frequencies in both ears with normal middle ear function. Anything less places a child at risk for spoken language learning problems and academic failure. So we have stricter criteria for infants and children because they're hearing their learning language, right? So for an adult, we can still consider 20 to be normal or 25, but for a child, they really require super hearing sensitivity to learn language. So we expect children to have even better hearing than what we would allow for adults. Again, this is the Bananagram. This is a really great tool you can use to teach parents about what their child can hear, what they can't hear. So minimal or slight hearing loss. Research shows that this does affect language learning. So a hearing loss between 15 to 25 dBHL, a child can miss at least 10% of the classroom learning. And if you remember from the last chapter when we're talking about decibels, how they're measured on a logarithmic scale, and a logarithmic scale means things grow exponentially. So as we go through these degrees of hearing loss, you know, it might just seem like, oh, five decibels here or there, but on a log multiplicative scale, this can add up to a lot. So these children might um, miss subtle clues in conversation. They have trouble keeping up with rapid inter ex interchanges or overhearing social exchanges. Because they have a minimal hearing loss, it takes a greater effort to hear and it could cause fatigue or it could create the appearance of maturity, like the child's not paying attention, the child can't focus, um, the child's easily distractible, the child's tired. Hearing is tiring, right? So as I say, think about the hardest class you're in and how hard it is to focus and listen for an extended period of time. Hearing can be very tiring. So these children could fall under the radar because we don't have good screening environments for them. Screening a child in the nurse's office, you could easily miss a 15 dB hearing loss. And we have a lack of information about what happens with this minimal slight hearing loss. It's still in research, but the research definitely indicates that um, it can have a negative, a negative effect on the child's learning. Same thing with the unilateral hearing loss. Unilateral hearing losses also affect a child's ability to acquire language. Moving on to a mild hearing loss from 25 to 40 decibels, they can miss passive learning opportunities and they're unable to overhear conversations, missing up to 50% of a classroom discussion, especially with far-off soft voices, accused of daydreaming or hearing only when they want to and not trying. And these um, negative words foster negative self-images and affect a child and their desire to go to school and to work in school. The repercussions could be great, especially on the impact of not hearing clear speech. A mild, unmanaged hearing loss places a child at least one grade level behind. As you go to a moderate hearing loss from 40 to 55 dBHL, if the content and the vocabulary of the message are known, the child might be able to get away with face-to-face -face conversations, causing the parents or the teachers to overestimate their auditory access, but 
they typically miss 50 to 75% of classroom learning. So you have impaired speech production, delayed or defective syntax, and a limited vocabulary. Additional negative effects um, can include deficits in maturity, communication, and social interactions. By fourth grade without treatment, these children are often now two grade levels behind. A moderate to severe hearing loss from 55 to 70 dBHL, 100% of the classroom content can be missed. And spoken communication must be very close and loud to be minimally understood. There is significant difficulty in schools, delayed language, syntax, reduced speech intelligibility, atonal voice quality, social interactions are also likely to difficult. As we enter severe hearing loss, again, we're on this logarithmic scale. Spoken language will not develop well without amplification or intervention. A profound hearing loss, deaf, 90 dBHL or greater, the child can't hear speech or even environmental sounds without amplification.